All right, this is What is Philosophy? This presentation explains the origin, role, and relevance of philosophy. We'll explore what philosophy is, how it has developed, and why it is important. Hopefully afterwards you will have a better idea of how to recognize and approach philosophical questions as well as how to succeed in this class. Uh, let's begin by examining the etymology or linguistic origins of the word philosophy. Literally, philosophy means the love of wisdom. We have two Greek roots that come together to form the word, phil and soph. First, the root phil means love. We see this root in other words too. For instance, philanthropist literally means love of humanity. It's used to signify those people who give large sums of money to social causes in the hopes of improving the conditions of life. Next, the root soph means wise. This root can be seen in the word sophisticated, which refers to someone who is wise in the ways of the world. For instance, a person demonstrates sophistication in fashion by being aware of diverse styles from different regions. So we know the word philosophy literally means the love of wisdom. While that helps us to understand the word and its origins, it does not help us to understand the aim of taking a philosophy class. What does one who loves wisdom do? Perhaps it is no surprise that those who love wisdom embrace scholarship. People who love wisdom study, learn, and think about how the world works. Philosophers are the quintessential academics. They share and discuss their ideas as well as promote concepts and practices that they anticipate will benefit the world. Originally, all higher education was considered to be philosophy. Hence, the ultimate degree available in most fields of study is a PhD, which stands for Doctor of Philosophy. For instance, if you study geology for a very long time, you will be awarded the degree Doctor of Philosophy in Geology. In that way, you are recognized by institutions of higher learning as one who loves wisdom and whose specialty is geology. Additionally, if you study geology, you will learn that the roots of geology trace back to Aristotle. He recognized river erosion and silt deposits. However, the roots of many disciplines are found in Aristotle, including those of philosophy. Given that the fields of philosophy and geology seem to be in many ways distinct, it seems peculiar that geology, the study of the earth, would be related to philosophy, the love of wisdom. You may wonder, why do geologists study Aristotle and receive a degree that is called a doctorate of philosophy? Although contemporary academic fields have expanded their subject matter, cultures, and practices, we continue to recognize the time when all of higher learning was under the umbrella of philosophy. Now the subject matter has grown and the information has become individuated. Hence, even though many fields contain remnants of their philosophical origins, their discipline is complete unto itself. Imagine, though, a time when scholars study, studied all of the world's knowledge in their pursuit of philosophy. Legend has it that Aristotle was the last person to live who understood the entire body of knowledge that was available to humankind. Regardless of whether this fable is actually true, we do know that the body of knowledge available to humankind has grown tremendously since the 4th century BCE. As a result of this expansion, disciplines that were once the domain of philosophy have individuated. Hence, we think of scientists as being different from philosophers. If I were to ask you what scientists do, what would you picture? 
You can probably identify some of the things that scientists do. When considering the activities of scientists, many people conjure images of researchers in lab coats using the latest technology to conduct experiments. Most people have some notion of the work of scientists and the study of science. If we continue to look at the individuation of various fields of study since Aristotle, we can contrast the academic projects of science and philosophy. What do we picture philosophers doing in their practice of philosophy? When I ask, what do philosophers do, what are the images that come to mind? I know that when I tell people I am a philosopher, they want to be supportive, but often they do not know how to respond. I receive comments like, that's nice, or do you like that? If they know that I teach, they focus on that aspect of my profession. Most of us grew up with teachers. We have a concept of that activity. I will guess what you might be thinking. This image of a philosopher is common. However, notice that he comes from another time and place. He looks antiquated and outmoded. If this is what you imagine when I say that I am a philosopher, it will not give you much information about what I do or why philosophy is relevant to our contemporary society. We know that philosophers love wisdom, but presumably so do those hip scientists. Philosophers use rational analysis to determine aspects of of the truth about the world. The conclusions that philosophers derive can help people live happier, healthier lives. While scientists experiment, philosophers reason. Notice that in the cartoon, a philosopher has gone astray. While he is robbing a couple, the wife suggests, for goodness sake, Harry, he's a philosopher. Maybe you can reason with him. She knows that even troubled philosophers are trained in the art of reason. The difference between philosophers and scientists, then, rests on the methodologies that each use to explore the world. In other words, philosophers and scientists draw on different practices to engage with the questions they explore. Because they use different methodologies, the questions they ask will vary as well. This isn't to say that experimentation and reasoning are mutually exclusive. Of course, scientists use reason to devise accurate and helpful experiments, and philosophers utilize scientific frameworks and data to inform their reasoning. However, that granted, their respective methodologies encourage different emphases. There are at least two ways of attaining information. Empirical study involves collecting observations that are drawn from sensory experience. Rational study, on the other hand, involves employing reasoning to assess situations. Science tends to emphasize empirical methodologies, like experimenting and observing, Philosophy tends to emphasize rational methodologies, like questioning and analyzing whether something makes sense. Again, when we picture the scientist, we typically imagine the scientist involved in some activity that demonstrates how the scientist contributes knowledge and value to the world. The scientist may be observing the galaxy through a telescope, testing the acidity of the soils, or mapping out the human genome. What strategies do philosophers use to analyze situations? How do philosophers contribute knowledge and value to the world? For a discussion to be truly philosophical, it must involve an examination of lines of reasoning. The technical term for lines of reasoning is argument. Philosophers employ rational argument to hone their theories. Rest assured, though, philosophical argument does not look like the image pictured. 
philosophers do not value being dismissive or aggressive. Because the word argument is commonly used to refer to heated conflicts, many people do not have a clear idea of what it is to argue reasonably. Perhaps a more palatable name for the activity of philosophical argument is rational discourse. These terms, philosophical argument and rational discourse, are synonyms. Philosophical activity involves constructing and critiquing lines of reasoning in order to develop and support a position. Having a clear approach to issues enables philosophers to effectively frame questions that are basic to life. Philosophers investigate issues that do not have immediate and obvious answers. Philosophers hope that finding ways to understand situations will make them easier to navigate. What kinds of questions do philosophers examine? Using rational argument and analysis, philosophers address issues that are crucial to the well-being and development of human individuals, cultures, and civilizations. In the various areas of philosophy, philosophers explore issues like, what is the nature of reality? How do we know things? How do we assess reasoning? And which principles and values contribute to harmonious relationships? Certainly these questions are important to humanity, but are they relevant to our contemporary fast-paced technological society? Exploring these questions and learning ways to think through basic life issues provides meaning and clarity to our pursuits. It increases the considerations and awareness that we bring to our lives. It allows our choices to be more thoughtful and rich, we develop reasons for our actions and integrity between our words, actions, and commitments. In that way, the study of philosophy, while it does not add flash, contributes to our abilities to live the good life, one of meaning and substance. For humanity, philosophy has proven to be timeless. Uh, notice these quotes. Voltaire says, The pursuit of what is true and the practice of what is good are the two most important objects of philosophy. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says, The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. Notice that Voltaire upholds philosophy as the exact pursuit that Dr. King describes as true education. Exploration of the world involves seeing what is in the world as well as discovering what is in oneself. Philosophy combines both of these endeavors in the pursuit of knowledge, meaning, and understanding. As you study philosophy, Take the opportunity to think honestly about the issues with which you are pre presented. The extent to which you engage with the material will be the extent to which you enrich your experience of the clarity and growth inherent in philosophical practice. About the only thing which upon which philosophers agree is the conviction that rational pursuit and inquiry will result in a more conscious, thoughtful, rich, and informed approach to life. Enjoy!